Hey guys, my name is Matsumio, and welcome to our episode of Sunday Mailbox. This is a video series where you, the viewer, can submit your gaming-related questions, and then I will give my humble opinion on them. To get the formatties out of the way real quick, if you would like to submit your own question that could be featured in an upcoming episode, you can do so by leaving a comment down below, or by sending me a Facebook and Twitter message. The first question for the day is, what do you think of an offensive specialist operator that would get an advantage depending on the objective? Like being able to use his primary while escorting the hostage, having a second diffuser, or being able to override an enemy's presence while securing the objective. That is one of the more unique operator ideas that I've heard in quite some time, and honestly, I love it. I mean, the fact that Ubisoft has already come out and said that they want to have 50 to 100 operators, I would not be surprised if we had someone that was entirely designed and oriented about securing or taking the objective. Let's say, for example, his special ability while playing on Bomb, I know I'm about to change your idea slightly here, is that he can plant the diffuser two times faster than anyone else, so it takes half the time. As long as his other teammates are aware that he he wants to rush in there and plant it, or at least they're aware of his special ability, that could be a serious game changer. You throw a couple of smokes into that room, maybe even have a Monty in front of you, having just a two second defuse time is, is really, really strong. You're in and out and now the defensive team has to come to you. I'm sure you guys already experience this all the time, but if the offensive team is able to put the diffuser down, it's really hard to win those rounds. It's not impossible by any stretch of the imagination, but they've got, now got you on the back foot. Either you're roaming around, it's gonna take you a while to get back to the objective, or even if you're on the objective itself and you're just trying to take the people that now are trying to snipe you through a little window, it's gonna be very, very challenging. Now, the downside of this guy, of course, is that that's all he's gonna bring to the table. He's not gonna have a thermite charge to break open reinforced walls. He's not gonna have a grenade launcher like Ash, so all he is is about playing the objective, and that would essentially balance him out. And so I can only imagine, maybe I'm wrong, maybe he would be useless and no one would play him, uh, but in certain tactics, as long as your team is working around this guy and they have the operators to compliment him and support him while he gets onto the objective, uh, this could be a a very powerful operator that does change the way that we play the game. I think the best illustration of this is when you talk about his ability while playing secure the area. Now this might be overpowered like you said, uh, but if he was on the objective and he's securing it, even if the defensive team is on it itself, it doesn't say stagnant. It, it starts to tick towards the offensive team and eventually if they don't deal with him, the offensive team is going to win by default. Now that does sound powerful, maybe a little bit too powerful, but as long as Ubisoft balanced it, maybe if it was contested, it was a slower tick, so it took it longer for offensive to win, but it changes that dynamic. Now defense needs to go on offense and clear him out if they want to win that round. And so yeah, I could honestly see Ubisoft bringing something like this into Rainbow Six Siege. It may not be this year, it may not even be next year, but if they want to have 50 to 100 operators total, I would not be surprised if they had someone like this. The next question comes from Dan and it is, what if there was an operator that was pretty much blank but allowed you to pick up a dead teammate's gear? Your team has Thermite but no Habana, then Thermite dies, this guy can pick up Thermite's gear and you haven't lost a vital operator. I am surprised at how often I get this question and the thing that sticks out to me the most is if you're worried that Thermite is gonna die, and you don't have a Habana, but you choose this guy over the Habana to ensure that the Thermite has a backup, well, why didn't you just pick Habana in the first place? Like, <laughs> like what? This doesn't make any sense to me. If you don't have a dead Thermite, he, he survives the entire round, or maybe his gadget just get blown gets blown out by a jammer or something like that, and it's already useless, you've now got an operator that doesn't bring anything to the table. Like, sure, your other teammates might die, and then you can pick their gadget on up, but he's just like a poor substitute. So I can't see this really being all that helpful. I mean, I have heard suggestions, why not being able just to use Thermite's charge if he already has it placed down. I've heard those recommendations, but honestly, I think that if the enemy is able to deal with a certain operator, they should stay dead. Their gadgets should stay dead, and the offensive or defensive team shouldn't be able to work around that in some way. That is a key component of Rainbow Six Siege. The other reason why I'm not too fond of this idea is that your entire plan or the operator's concept revolves around your teammates dying. That doesn't sound like a very good idea. You don't want your teammates to die. You want them to survive. And so in a perfect situation, you're an operator that doesn't pick anything up because all your teammates survived in a best case scenario. And while I will give it to you, that it would give you a lot of options if you were in a one versus five. If all of your teammates died around you, you got the pick of the litter, you can pick whatever gadgets that you want. And if that allows you to get onto the objective, great. 
In reality, I just don't think that it would be all that useful, and this operator idea just rubs me the wrong way. And so the fact that it relies on your teammates to die to even have a gadget, and the fact that you could have picked an operator already that probably would have done the same thing just as well as the other ones, or at least slightly differently, I, I'm gonna have to say no on this concept. I might be in the minority. I know a lot of people have brought up this question, and so clearly there is some interest here, uh, but this is not a guy that I would like to see added into Siege. The next question is, what do you think about For Honor's lifespan? Will it be long like Rainbow Six Siege or die out after some time? I honestly have no idea. I know why people are asking this, because they wanna know that if they pick up this product that it's gonna have a, lo a long lifespan. At its core, this is a multiplayer only game. It does have a campaign, but the reason why you play For Honor is of course for the multiplayer, and you wanna have a thriving community for months or months or even to a year. I will say that I gotta give props to Ubisoft with the way that they've handled their DLC policy. It's basically exactly like Rainbow Six Siege. Every couple of months, they're gonna come out with new characters and heroes. I think there's gonna be like two maps every month, so all of that content is gonna be free. Uh, you're gonna have to spend the in-game currency to buy these new heroes, but if you wanna play it free from here on out after you bought it, you're gonna have access to all of that content. And so from that standpoint, I think that Ubisoft is in the right and they're doing everything that they can to ensure that this game has a lot of longevity. That said though, this is a fighting game at its core. On average, I think that fighting games don't have as large of an audience as a big first person shooter. Now you could have said the same thing for Rainbow Six Siege. Rainbow Six Siege is a bit of a niche as well. It's a very tactical shooter. At initial glance, you would not think that this would be doing as well as it did. You know, Battlefield is more mainstream. Call of Duty has a gigantic audience because it is a more casual game. That's not really the case with Rainbow Six Siege, but even it's been very successful. And so I don't think it's really, really a good idea to compare For Honor to Siege because Siege is a bit of an outlier. I, I don't think anyone was really expecting it to do as well as it did, and so who knows what's gonna be in store for Honor. At the end of the day, I'm not a prophet. It would be great if I was, but I can't foresee the future, and while it seems like Ubisoft is taking every necessary step to ensure that this game is going to thrive in the future, it's, it's really gonna be down to the player base if they're interested in it for a long period of time and if they are going to bring the necessary updates to sustain that. The next question comes from Aiden and it is, do you think that Twitch is too powerful at destroying mirror canisters? I think it should take three to five hits to destroy it to balance it out. Big risk, but good reward. Now, originally when the new operators came out, I had the same mindset. One little Twitch drone, if they're, if they're able to get on the objective, is able to open up essentially two Habana holes, that is huge. Like I thought that that was too much of a counter and in some cases just made Mira worthless. Like why even bring her if this was that big of a counter? Now that I've had a chance to play with these characters more than just a couple of days, I'm finding that while yes, it is a good counter, if you're looking for it or you take the necessary steps to ensure that you're just not gonna have any problems with Twitch, it's really not that big of a deal. The first thing that you really need to do is just call out to your teammates, hey, watch out for the Twitch drone. If you see the Twitch drone, call out where it is, ensure that it dies. The other thing that you can do is just run a mute. Mute is really, really good. I, I know a lot of people don't like to play him because he's not as flashy as some of the other operators, but you put his jammer down on the side of a doorway, that Twitch drone isn't getting anywhere near that objective. They then need to either shoot it out, which means that they're already close to the objective itself and it's not really gonna even matter, or they have to spend a Thatcher grenade, and at that point, they're spending a lot of resources just to get that Twitch drone in there, and at that time, it's probably gonna be too little too late. And so at least from my experience, I feel like it's relatively well balanced. Maybe in a couple of weeks I will be changing my tune if Twitch drones get more creative and it just becomes a constant problem. Maybe they need to bump it up. If they brought it up to two shots to drop it, that would be a fair compromise. Going up to three to five though seems excessive. Who is just gonna allow a Twitch drone to land five shots against a canister? And while I know it is very powerful, I know that they are opening up essentially Habana Hall, but at the end of the day, it is designed to counter her gadget. Like, Twitch is her direct counter, and I think that that should stay the way that it is. And so my advice is that if you have been struggling with Twitch drones, is just coordinate and communicate with your teammates. Wait for the callout that Twitch drone is down so that you can then place up your gadgets. Have someone play as mute. This is the reason why there is synergy between different operators. I mean, the reason why you have Thatcher and Thermite always going together is because they're like peanut butter and jelly. They complement people very well, and that's gonna be the same thing, I think, for both Mira and Mute. And so, if you've been struggling, that is my main advice. Uh, but yeah, guys, that is about it for today's Sunday Mailbox. I hope you enjoyed. 
Let me know what you thought about what we discussed in today's video. Do you like the idea of having a specialist operator add in a Rainbow Six Siege? Do you think that would be overpowered? Do you think that that would be underpowered? Do you think that Mirror's Canister does need an upgrade? Do you think that it is a little bit too weak against Twitch? Give me your guys' thoughts down below. Uh, as always, if you would like to submit your own question for an upcoming episode, you can also leave a comment or by sending me a Facebook and Twitter message. But until tomorrow, guys, have a good one and take it easy.